All right, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna look at um, our final equation, equation three, which is the M sub I matrix or column vectors equal to your K sub I times delta sub I plus F M I. And what this gives us, um, this equation gives us our internal reactions that's going on um, in our diagram. So if we, let's say if we looked at element one here and we cut element one, uh, let's say, very close to the joints, um, and we want to figure out, okay, here's element one, ooh, here's element one, right? Here's element one. What's going on internally on this member? So what's the shears here? What are, what are the internal moments here? And the way we can figure that out is using equation three, this M sub I equation. So there's four um, elements. That means we have to do this equation four times. And well, let's just let's just start with. Um, let's see how much space I have. Oh, I got plenty of space. Um, well, okay. So let's do m sub one, and m sub one is equal to your k matrix one times your delta matrix one um, plus FM one. And really we have all of these except delta one, right? Earlier on we figured out what delta U was, but we don't know what delta one is. Uh, not to worry, we'll get to that. Uh, so let's start plugging the matrices in. So for K sub one, remember, very, very early on in this example, we figured out what our K sub one matrix was, right? It's, it's this matrix right here, K sub one. So if I took this matrix and I rewrote it here and K sub one um, was one sixth, one twelfth, uh, one ninety sixth, one ninety six, negative one over ninety six, and then you have one over twelve, one over six, 1 over 96, negative 1 over 96, uh, 1 over 96, 1 over 96, um, 1 over 1152, negative 1 over 1152, uh, negative 1 over 96, negative 1 over 96, 1 over 1152, um, and then finally we have 1 over 1152. All right, cool. So that's our case of one matrix. And remember our case of one matrix, um, it was four, one, six, seven, right? Four, one, oops. Four, one, six, seven. Four, one, six, seven. Four, one, six, seven. Um, I hope, yeah, four, one, six, seven. And then to that we multiply delta sub 1. Delta sub 1 is all the deformations happening at element 1. Okay. Now if we look at element 1, element 1 is right here. Right? It has degree of freedom 4, 1, 6, 7. So we're going to write the deformations um, in that order. 4, 1, 6, 7. Is there a deformation um, here at, at degree of freedom four. No, because this is a restrained react this is a restrained degree of freedom, meaning it can't move. So theta four is zero. So I'm gonna write that uh, down here. Theta four or four is zero, right? So we look at the next one. Next one is theta one. Theta one is an unrestrained degree of freedom freedom and we figured out what that deformation was um, when we figured out what our delta sub u right our um, unrestrained deformations and our one value was the 1728 um, over 7 ei right 1728 over 7 and then ei we can actually um, just pull out here one over EI, and then K also had an EI pulled out. Notice they both cancel out, right? And then 
uh, theta 1, so it's 4, 1, 6, 7. They're both restrained reactions, meaning they don't have any deformations, right? They can't move their supports. Uh, those are both zeros. And then finally, we add to that our FM1 matrix. And remember, our FM1 matrix is the matrices we um, we figured out when we drew our internal reaction. Oops. Internal. Internal. Uh-oh. It's not drawing. Oh, now it draws, but then it doesn't draw right. Okay. So it is these four matrices right here, and we figured out what those values were when we looked at our um, internal reaction diagram which was you know up here so for FM1 our FM1 matrix is uh, 150 negative 150 33 and 33 so here I'm gonna add uh, 150 negative 150 33 and 33 and if we do our matrix algebra we're gonna get um, 1194 over 7 negative 762 over 7 249 over 7 and 213 over 7 okay so what do these moments mean well if we looked at element 1 if we looked at element 1 um, it has, you know, the distributed load here, and then it has that 18 kip point load here. This is 2 kip per foot, right? This is a uniformly distributed load. This, these numbers are the internal reactions that correspond to these degrees of freedom, 4, 1, 6, 7. And remember, 4 and 1 were rotational degrees of freedom, so that means these first two numbers 1194 over 7 and negative 762 over 7 are internal moments, right? Rotational. So 4 was on the left side of element 1, right? And that was 1194 over 7. So 1194 over 7 kip foot, right? And the reason it's, it's counterclockwise is because it's, well, that's what we assumed when we drew our degree of freedom diagram right up here right theta 4 was counterclockwise and theta 1 was also clockwise or counterclockwise right so we have this moment here internal right and then the second value was negative 762 over 7 and since our degree of freedom assumption was uh, counterclockwise and we had a negative in our answer, that means it's going clockwise, right? This way. 762 over 7 uh, kip foot, right? And then you have 249 and 213 over 7 that correspond to degree of freedoms number 6 and 7. And remember, 6 and 7 were both sheer degree of freedoms, right? Vertical. So that means on the right side or left side here, you have 249 over 7 kips. And on the uh, right side, you have 213 over 7 kips. And so that's, that's what's going on internally on element 1. And that's how this equation, m, m sub i, is equal to k sub i uh, times delta sub i plus fm sub i. All right? Um, so that's about the end of, end of this example. In the next video, in the next couple of videos, I'll finish up M sub 2, 3, and 4, and we should be done with this example. All right, so see you then.